you're gonna find out here pretty soon that all our how-to videos they are long videos uh, because we want to talk about a lot of things to consider as you're changing uh, your strings as you're uh, tuning up your instrument changing tunings so get a cup of coffee and sit down get comfortable and let's let's explore this world of putting new strings on your dulcimer hi there today this is uh, one of our first uh, how-to videos uh, that we've been promising people for years on the uh, website uh, this this particular one is how to change strings on your dulcimer Changing strings is something that everybody should know how to do and do it by themselves. You bring your dulcimer in here, we're happy and glad to change them for free. Uh, but uh, changing them at home allows you to move on with uh, playing, uh, keeping your strings updated. And it allows you to change your strings when, when one of them breaks accidentally or something like that happens. It happens to everybody. You've seen big names on the stage uh, break a string. So changing your strings is something each person should be able to do if they're going to play the dulcimer. It's not that hard. But uh, we'll show you how to string up your dulcimer. So we're going to start out by changing the strings on your flathead type of dulcimer. We'll have another video of how to change them on your scroll head. It's a little bit different uh, method to changing, but it's still the same concept of, of turning the string on there. First of all, you have to start by taking your strings off. I, I like to use a string winder. Uh, there's different methods of these. You just want to get one that spins pretty easily. Uh, some people put them on the end of a drill. I think the string winder is a little faster. Uh, by turning them, uh, you can, you can uh, spin them pretty quickly because these are geared tuners. They're like 14 to one geared tuners. So 14 turns here makes one turn here. So you can do it by hand, but for the few bucks that one of these string winders uh, costs you, it's a pretty handy investment. You get it loose, take the string off. Now, did you notice how easily the string came off? Because when we show you how to string these, some people will put the string around and then they'll loop it and link it around and almost tie it onto the dulcimer so that when you start taking them off you just go okay this is more of a chore to take the string off than it is to put the new one on so the string should be able to just fall right off when you're done your option is to change one string at a time to keep track of everything or take them all off and and do it either way I like to take mine all off because when you take all of them off, you can wipe down your dulcimer and uh, dust it in there where you can't dust it very easily. Take them off in whatever order is convenient for you. you get them off like that and they come right off and they come off the other, other end. These happen to be a, a loop end dulcimer string uh dulcimer string they're they're a guitar string a banjo string they are just a generic string uh made for any musical instrument there's nothing special about a dulcimer string if anybody tells you that there's a special dulcimer string uh, there is no dulcimer maker out there that makes their own strings these happen to come from diderio uh that's the string makers that we buy from right now because they they seem to uh, uh give a good bulk bulk way to buy them know whether you have loop end or ball end we'll we'll get in we'll maybe show some ball end ones in a little bit ball end ones are the typical ones for the uh, guitars and they'll have different pegs or you'll have different ways to attach them on the back of your dulcimer this dulcimer that i'm doing right now just happens to have a loop end anyway back back to your ball end and loop end there will be another video on explaining and showing a little more information on in on which uh which variety of string that you happen to have on your dulcimer anyway this this dulcimer just happened to have only three strings on it uh as i as i have dropped to the dark side and play with three strings once in a while and not all four uh that's okay you whatever whatever it is i'm gonna put four back on it just so that we have a lots of different scenarios of of um, putting the strings on now that all these are off and i've cleaned them up a little bit 
Oh, did I tell you this is my vintage? Well, it isn't really vintage. There's nothing that special about it. It's a 1989 uh, teardrop that I've had for, well, since 1989. Uh, the scroll head will go with my 1986 or 7 model. Anyway, start back on a, on a flat head. You can go in any order that you want to go in. Doesn't matter. Scroll heads will matter. This is a good time to uh, wipe off your dulcimer. I, I, I did like this for demonstration purposes, but the people filming said, no, let's, let's show that using nice, soft uh, microfiber cloth would be nice. If there's some stains where you, you know, spilled something on there, oh, who would do that? Anyway, uh, you can take a little damp rag and wipe it off. Make sure you to dry it. These have a nice lacquer finish on there that allows you to, uh, to clean them up really nicely. So another thing to think about is our our bridges are glued in. They are they are solid. Your particular dulcimer that you may be uh, stringing up may have a floating bridge. Make a little mark on there as to where that floating is, bridge is, so that you can intonate it and and put it back in approximately the same place. These are these are affixed situation so you don't need to worry about them too much but over the years your glue may have dried out or something and that could fall out so don't tip it around and lose this thing that's kind of an important part of your dulcimer loop and string we're going to take it on this back side we're going to loop it in the first one we're going to bring it across the dulcimer now you say I need three hands here. Yes, you could. But if you take your elbow and, well, actually your forearm, and, and put it down on top of the dulcimer, you hold it in place so that it's not going anywhere. Which direction do I push through? Do I push the string through? It doesn't really matter which direction you push it through. You can come from this side or this side. I personally like to bring it back towards me. That way I can see that the string will be coming down the center of the instrument. These, these pegs, it will come down the center. This will come down the center here. Have a nice little bit of slack because you're not gonna need to take the whole, whole string to uh, go around the dulcimer. So, being as we have already decided which direction that this is gonna go, we're gonna pull it tightly. And by pulling it tightly, we have made a kink right there in our string. That is, that's where our string length is going to be. The other side, we're going to kink it that way. Right there, you have enough of a kink in your dulcimer. That little, it makes a little S in here. That will hold your string as good as you need it to hold. Now you can start wrapping it or you can snip it off right away. Snip them off very, very closely. This is one that I found on the floor in the back. I think somebody threw it down. Uh, because it wasn't working. Your, your, results, your results may vary, but probably they won't. That'll be about the same thing. So I'm pulling pretty tightly on here, and that is holding all you need to hold with the dulcimer. You see, we have cut it very short so that none of the uh, string is sticking out. Have you ever poked yourself on, on, on a string sticking out about this far? It hurts, trust me. And then you simply take your... Uh, I like to stick it off the end of a table. That way I can spin my spin my spinner and I don't have to lift up the dulcimer. But you see, as you, as you turn the tuner, put a little bit of a tension downward on it with one of your fingers. And that way it wraps around there very neatly. Now, we're going to go three or four wraps because if you want to loosen the string sometimes, you don't want one wrap to go around there and then it falls off because you loosened your strings, I don't know, to clean underneath it or fix something. Here, right away, we are, and then it just, it just falls off of your hand and falls right onto there. We'll do number two in much the same way. I'm going to show you maybe a little different angle to go from. Your choice of how you want to string it is fine. We will now take it, 
means we're going to do the second string over. We're going to do it on the second peg. Okay. Same, same scenario. Put your forearm down on it to hold the string so that you can work here. Now look, right here, I didn't go from the opposite way. I can go, I can go from this direction or I can go from this direction. It really doesn't matter. The main thing is that the string will be coming down the center here. So we're gonna put a little kink in it there. We're gonna kink this the opposite direction. See how that is? If you lift that up a little bit, that kink will go around. If you don't cut it right away, that kink will go over the top of your fingers there. See? And then you can cut it later. Your option was to, whether to cut it right away or to cut it afterwards. Doesn't really matter. And here's these bad, bad uh, cutters again. Okay, so now we're ready for either the bass string or the middle string. Let's just go down the line. For some of you who are OCD that would bother, we go back and forth and back and forth. This would be right down the line nicely. Hook it onto your hook it onto your third pin over. And here. Now remember, we're gonna come, these went on the inside here, these come on the inside of these tuners. So that I always know which direction it's going. I, I always put it through so that I have to see how I how I bring it. Then I know for sure which direction the the string is gonna go. And then I take this in and I pull it the opposite way. I've made that S type of a hook in there, which securely holds your dulcimer. You don't need to go around this a couple times. You see how how strong that holds? These turn this direction. What a klutz. I should have brought my I should have put my other glasses on. Then I could see. Oh wait. There. I can do that. Now I can see actually what I'm doing. Oh, how refreshing. How refreshing that is. Uh But it goes on fairly quickly. You don't have to turn this this fast. But see how that other tail just kind of goes goes over the top. You don't need to put a string one on the top and one underneath. You do not need to lock these in. This S that we put in is 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 as strong as it needs to be, and it looks a little neater this way. Put it in the center as it gets down here. And then as it pulls off your thumb, there you go. Okay, and as I promised, I got a better pair of snippers. Works like magic, doesn't it? The last one, this happens to be a, um, a flat wound. I like a flat wound because I use a lot of cording on my on my uh, bass string, but that doesn't matter. That's in another video. They'll talk about that. Um, put it on the last hook. Bring it around. Everything's in the same in the same way and same manner. It's it's simplest sometimes to. I like personally to come always down towards me. Then I have the decision to go this way or this way. And because we go down the center of the strings, we simply bring it around that way. So I know that it always goes down the center. Pull your tail up over here. And this is a little awkward. I don't talk about this much. This is kind of a private thing between you and your dulcimer. So just what words you say will be soothing to yourself. Talk about 
Talk about, oh, my honey dulcimer, you're going to sound so nice. After I've got new strings on here, I didn't know I was not taking care of you with that. And uh, snip that off. Snip it right off as close as you can. Tune them up. Got a little... There will be another video on tuning, but tune these right up. You will hear a little snap. Make sure, make sure as you put the string in here that, that it is in your nut and that it is in your bridge and that it's in these little marks in the back, that everything lays nicely in there. If not, you're going to get some buzzes and it's not going to sound nice. This is pretty much there. And I see, I had it out of, out of these two. You just slide it over there and get them into there. Now I, tune, I play in DAA, so I'm only tuning it to DAA. That's not the point, you tune to whatever tuning you like. And away you go. That's that's how you put new strings on. Uh, and they're nice and neat. They're not sticking out. They have uh, good kinks in them. They're going to hold about 50 hours worth of playing. If you play uh, one hour a week, uh, change them every year. If you play two hours a week, twice a year. And you can do the math pass there. But change your own strings. That's It's something that uh, allows you to bond with your instrument a little bit more better and uh, know your instrument and become more secure about talking about your instrument. Uh, I know people who play very well and can't change their own strings. They go, it's it's part of playing is, is changing your strings. And then you can also find any kind of, uh, you know, if you have little problems that maybe you can look at your strings uh, to fix that. Oh, I didn't change my glasses back. I can't see as well, but uh, by golly, by golly, uh, they aren't quite the same. Anyway, there's your segment on changing strings. I hope this helps. Uh, write any comments below. So thank you for your patience. Uh, hopefully this helps you tune your dulcimer. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll probably get some notifications when we get new uh, how-to videos up that take some time. And But we want you to bond with your instrument and uh, make this a more fulfilling event of playing. And while we're at it, uh, in the next day or so, we're going to make another video of how to change the strings on your scroll head. Thank you.